one of the finalists for the Best Tall Building in Europe Award was the Complesso Garibaldi Tower in Milan, Italy, uh, which is really an interesting project because it's a renovation of an existing building. To talk with us about this is uh, Gianni Bardazzi, uh, Bardazzi, the Vice President of Mayor Technomont, and Massimo Roy, who's the design architect, uh, both in from Italy. Uh, there's so much going on in this project here, and the story of this is uh, basically a high-rise that had been developed or built, what, in the, in the 1980s that you completely stripped down and retrofitted? Absolutely. Is that right? Tell me, from, from the owner's standpoint, uh, what was the consideration here? Our consideration was that uh, when we decide to, to move uh, our people in another uh, buildings, uh, the requirements was, of course, uh, to have the, uh, the, the right uh, uh, dimension of square meters, but also to look for a sustainable building, maybe with also the possibility to, to have uh, something related to the, to, to the past. In this sense, uh, the Garibaldi complex uh, represented the best because it was uh, a new building according to the sustainable uh, requirements, but uh, was not completely new. Uh, with all the respect, uh, we think, as uh, Massimo explained before, that it's important for us, especially for Italian people, to have uh, some uh, relation with the past and concerning the requirements for, you know, flexibility and uh, well-being for the, the, our people uh, was really uh, nice. Uh, our people uh, in a company like Mayre Techimont is uh, the principal asset, so we, we, we take care about them. And in this sense, the building was uh, really, uh, you know, respectful of, uh, of the requirements. Uh, Massimo, when you, uh, you're, you're the architect for this, and as you look at the before and after of this building, uh, the views are very different. Uh, how much was this building stripped, stripped down? Well, I started from a, a client dream. He said that uh, he would like to, to, to give a precious uh, gift to the city of Milan. So when uh, I, I thought about a gift, a precious gift, I thought about a diamond, precious stone. So we started designing uh, from inside, uh, so trying to, to give more flexibility, more efficiency to the building. We started knowing that the building was uh, a very uh, low performance building. They spent more than 100 euros per square meter of maintenance cost. And starting from inside, we, we, we grew according on our local habits and local architectural elements, designing some uh, a new building that could match the existing uh, Italian uh, modern architecture elements with that modern one and taking care about the cost. Actually, the building has uh, a maintenance cost around 15 euros, one five. That is uh, more or less eight times less than before. And the facade is made by about 2,000 cells that are uh, interactive cells that uh, move on four different directions, uh, reflecting natural light uh, during the day and uh, offering to the people going around a different shape and different views according on the weather, according on the time. And so it's uh, not a, a movable building because it's not a movable, but it's changed its uh, image. Every, every minute. There's so much going on here, which is uh, the reuse of an existing building, a double skin facade, uh, naturally ventilated office spaces, uh, geothermal heat pumps, solar collectors, um, so much going on here. It was, were you given pretty much free reign to yes. find whatever efficiencies there were? Uh, we, we tried to use all the natural elements that, that, was, uh, that were di uh, at disposition uh, around the building. Starting from the wind, we are on the north side of Milan, we receive a, a strong wind at 100 meters high. So we use the wind to refresh the, the building itself, also for the extraction of toilets uh, air. Then on the top, we have a rainwater tank to collect the rainwaters. We use the rainwaters for fluid the toilets and we heat the 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 heat uh, the, the water on the top having solar panels and we try also to produce uh, electricity uh, having uh, on the south facade uh, photovoltaic panels 
is uh, only for, uh, they say, common places, common spaces, and for uh, the, the corridors, for the lifts, but uh, is uh, the first step. So producing uh, heat and cooling by geothermal power, having uh, the help of the, uh, the water, we can uh, have heat and cooling with no CO2 emission, and uh, we can uh, offer a high standard level for, for the users. The important thing also is uh, it's not made by one man. <laughs> the architect today uh, cannot be, as in the past, a demiurge, able to, to jump in a different uh, arts and different fields. Today, the designer of this building is uh, a teamwork, is a group of experts in different uh, items, uh, from architecture, from urban planning, space planning, interior design, um, mechanical and electrical and structural engineering, uh, expert on environment, uh, ambience, and so. So I was only uh, like a director. Uh, I tried to, to do my best uh, doing some sketches and uh, trying to, 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 to lead the, the group of uh, experts in this project. And the result uh, is a, a common result, a common goal for all of us. Well, if I may, I, I could say that you were um, able to listen and try to, you know, make uh, in, uh, and translate uh, also some requirements. The, the building C that uh, will link uh, the two uh, towers according to my opinion, is the head of the, the project, and Massimo was really able to translate uh, some of our strong requirements as uh, the Agora, I mean uh, the, the square on the ground floor. That for us is very important because it's a way to give to our people the possibility to spend free time uh, during the work. In this sense, is also sort of to save money because if you have people that remain more or less in the space of the, the, the work building is also the way to have you know, more efficiency. Uh, Massimo, you're the author of a book called uh, Less Ego, More Eco. That's a book about sustainability. Uh, tell us what's in here. It's, uh, it was an art uh, job. Uh, I started a couple of years ago after the opening of uh, Expo 2010 in uh, Shanghai where I was invited having a speech after developers, investors, uh, users, uh, municipality, uh, politicians, uh, and all of them spoke a different language, uh, having different targets. So when uh, they asked me what, uh, what uh, I think about uh, sustainability, I said that maybe we have to uh, come back on the origin. Uh, we, we need uh, more uh, common vision and uh, less private interest. So less ego means less private in interest and more eco vision, more common goals uh, to reach it. Is, is self-sufficiency part of the overall sustainability uh, Absolutely, strategy? Absolutely, yes. But uh, first of all, we can do and we, act, uh, we can act uh, designing an incredible green building, but then we have to teach, uh, we have to educate the people to use the building. Because if we are uh, in our house, we use to turn off the light, uh, to, to reduce uh, the heating or the cooling during the day. But when we are in the public spaces or in the office, uh, we don't care about the, all the, the items around us. So also uh, educate people is an important uh, issue uh, to, to save uh, energy and to reduce consumption. Well, absolutely, a project uh, that deserves recognition on a world stage. Congratulations. Uh, welcome to Chicago, and thanks for coming by. Thank you. Thank you to you. To you.